Hello everyone and welcome. Uh, for this video, we're going to determine if the girder is adequate to support the given loads. Here we have the dead load as 15 pounds square feet, so I'm being, I've been a little bit conservative, but that's okay. And the live load here is going to be 40 pounds square feet because it's a first floor framing system, so I'm guessing that there might be uh, a living room, dining room. Not always, always, always the case, but let's say there is a living room and dining room, so you're going to have guests over. Uh, people, a party, so we're going to use a live load of 40. If this was a bedroom, then we'll use a live load of 30, but that's okay. Uh, the member here for the girder is a number two spruce pine fir, and lateral buckling is prevented due to the joists that are connected to the girder, and it's preventing it from uh, moving uh, left or right or twisting. So it's, giving, it's providing some stability to the girder itself. The joist is used in dry surface condition and, the, and at normal temperatures. So that means that the wet surface factor, CM, is going to be equal to 1 for the, uh, for the moisture. And the temperature factor, CT, is also going to equal to 1. Uh, the load duration factor, because we're going to use ASD, is also going to equal to 1 because we only have dead load and live load. Uh, what else? The repetitive member factor is going to equal to 1 because this GERD is not used repeti repetitively. So it's just equals, equals to 1. And for this video, we're going to determine the ma maximum moment. We're going to determine the maximum shear, the maximum reaction, and uh, inertia required. Once we find all those things, we're going to find the sexual modulus of this girder. We're going to find the inertia of this girder and with those two, even the area, we could find the, the, max, the moment capacity, the shear capacity, the deflection, I guess, capacity of this girder itself. So let's, let's do this. Here we go. So we have this girder, this, uh, uh, this girder is to get some loading, half of the loading, or well, one fourth of the loading is gonna go to the wall. So to the left wall, you're gonna see loading going to it, and on the right side, one fourth of that wall is going to go to this foundation wall, and then the rest is going to go to this girder. So the length here is approximately 20, so I'm just going to say it's 20, even though it says 19 feet, 11 inches, let's just say it's 20 feet. So half of the loading is going to the girder, so a trip width is 10 feet. Now we have our dead load and our live load. We want to convert the pound square feet to pounds linear feet, so we're going to multiply the trip width and multiply that with the dead load and live load. So 15 times 10 is going to give us 150 pounds linear feet, 40 times 10 is going to give us 400 pounds linear feet. With this, we are able to get our maximum moment, maximum shear, and inertia required. Now, uh, also, we need the spacing of the ladder columns here. So the spacing of the ladder columns are, is, or is six feet. So the ladders are spaced at six feet on center. So that's our length, six feet. Let's continue. We're going to use this right here, the continuous beam for equal spans, all spans loaded. Our length here, our L, is 6 feet. Our W is going to be our dead and live put together because we're using ASD, so dead plus live. So 150 plus 400 is going to give us 550. So to find the maximum moment, we go over here where it says moment. We're trying to look where we where is the maximum moment. The maximum is around here and here. So we're just going to use that. So it's pole 1071 times the uniform load, the total uniform load, times the length squared. So we do that, pop, 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 and we get 2,121 pounds feet. That's our maximum moment. Now for our maximum shear, we look at shear. We're trying to see where we have our maximum shear. So it looks like we have a maximum shear over here and over here, which is 0 0.607 times the uniform load times the length, or in this case, the space in between lallies. So it's 0 0.607 times 550 times six, we're gonna get 2,003 pounds. 
Now, if you wanna, if you wanna design for the lallies and design for the footings, it's also good to get the maximum reaction. So in this case, the maximum reaction is going to be 1.143 times the uniform load times the length. And in the end, we're gonna get 3,792. If you know the length of the lally, you know the uh, the reaction that it sees, you could go and pick out a lally that has a higher capacity, or has the capacity to withstand this loading here. Okay. Uh, we could also find the required inertia, but we're gonna uh, we're gonna wait for that because we're going to need the yaw modulus. So I don't have that here. So let's we'll put that on hold. So let's continue. The MDS uh, supplement. This is what we're gonna be using. The size factor because well, I'll show you real quick. This is our girder. This is our size of the girder. Is a nine and a quarter, or is a seven and a quarter by nine and a quarter? So with that, we're going to determine the size factor, the adjust adjustment factor for the size. So for timbers, for beams and stringers, we're going to use this. And because it's nine and a quarter, it's less than twelve inches. Our size factor is one point zero. So let's continue. Now we need to get the section modulus, we need to get the inertia of this bad boy right here. So let's do that. So we have section modulus is B, which is this right here, times D, the depth, to the second power divided by 6. So I'm just going to write that down. That's going to give us our section modulus. Our inertia is going to be BD to the third power over 12. So, just writing this down. All right, so let's use our calculator. So, 7.25 times 9.25 to the second power divided by 6 it's going to give us 103.4 to the third for the section modulus and for inertia 7.25 times 9.25 to the third divide that by 12 it's going to give us our inertia and our inertia here is 4 78.2 so that's good to know so now that we have that let's continue and as a reference design values for visually graded timbers 5x5 five five and larger so we're using spruce pine fir I should have said south because this is what uh, is like the cheap material on Home Depot so usually I like to go with this because if, some, if they decide to go with something better than even better. So you want to design for the worst case scenario. So we're using Spruce Pine Fir South number two right here. And we, we wanna, we're going to use the FB, the bending uh, stress here, which is 575 pounds square inch. Now, if, if we remember, there the there's no repetitive factor. There's not the well, there is a repetitive factor, but equals to one. The duration factor equals to one. Everything equals to one. So there's there is no adjustment to this bending stress. So that's five seventy five. Five seventy five psi. We're gonna use that. We're gonna multiply that with the section modulus. So I don't remember what the section modulus is because I have bad memory. But let's go back. A section modulus is 103.4. So 575 times 103.4 gives us a pretty big number. 
59, 4, 5, 5. This is pounds, inch. To convert that to pounds feet, just divide that by 12. And when I get 4,000, 954. With which I believe is greater than the moment that it sees in the moment over here. It's 2,121. So. When it comes to moment, it's good. Now. Here, our shear is 125 um, PSI, or a shear parallel to green. So, we're going to go, I'm going to use this, 3V over 2A. So, the shear that this guy, that what it saw, is 2,003 pounds. So 2,003 pounds divided by 2 times the area, which is, I think it was 7.25 times uh, uh, 9.25. I think it was 9.25. You do this, it's going to give you the shear that this guy sees. So 3 times 2,003 divided by 2. Divided by 7.25 and divide that by 9.25. We get 44.8 psi. So the stress, shear stress, which is less than 100, 125 psi. Excuse me. Which is okay. That's good. So when it comes to the uh, moment, it's good. When it comes to shear, it's good. Now we need to see what happens for the serviceability. So what we're going to do now, we're going to find the required inertia for dead and live. So if we go back to the, to the slides where the beam diagram is, it's kind of hard to read. But the maximum deflection occur. Well, the equation for the uh, maximum deflection for this situation is 0 0.0065 times the uniform load times the length to the fourth power divided by EI. Now I want to get the required inertia. So instead of the length being the length being to the fourth power, is going to be to the third power. So we write that equation down: 0 0.0065 W to the alter to the third power all over. E. That's it. We're going to use that equation. So 0 0.0065 times 550. That's pounds per feet. So I want that to be pounds per inch. So divide that by 12 times the length, which is 6 feet. Again, I want the 6 feet to be in inches. Times that by 12 to the third power. All over. The jump modulus of the string here for the yaw, excuse me, for the beam, not for the string, for the beam. And the yaw modulus is at, uh, 1 million. So you just plug that in, the, in your calculator and you're going to get the required inertia for dead and live. 0.0065 times 450 divided by 12. Uh, times that by 6 times 12 and all of that to the third power and divide that by 1 million I did forget something I forgot to multiply this guy times you have to multiply that by 240 so I messed up there So once you do that, you're going to get the required inertia for, for dead and live. So it's 26.68. And from what I recall, I mean, I think we were getting it for 100. 
around there for the inertia we have 478.2 so that's more than adequate it's, it's okay I, I could check out for the live but I know for a fact that it's not gonna go surpass 400 so I'm not going to uh, but if you were I'll just let you know that you just have to multiply this guy by 36 over 24 and then multiply this by 400 over 500 so this is your you're taking away the 24 and you like the 240 and you're multiplying by 360 and then over here you're getting rid of the 550 it's supposed to be 550 not 500 you know what let me just do it. what the heck so 26.68 times 36 divided by 24 times 400 divided by 550 I get 29.11 which is very very small compared to uh, the 478 so there you go let me do a quick recap it's 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 a lot to digest so what do we have? We have a floor system. We have a girder. We designed it for a girder. The girder is a uh, number two SPF. Uh, the length here is 20. The space in between lallies are six. The dead load is 15, the live load is 40. Okay, we have that. We, we convert the pound square feet to pound linear feet. With that, we were able to get the maximum moment, maximum shear, and maximum reaction using the, the equations here. The girder has some dimensions. Uh, size factor is one because, again, this is less than 12, so it's one. With this these dimensions, I'm able to get the section modulus and the inertia. With the section modulus, I multiply that by the bending stress, and I'm able to get 2,100, excuse me, 4,954, which is greater than the maximum moment that this girder sees. Then we get the shear stress that this girder is seeing, which is 444.8, which is less than 125 PSI, which is good too. Last but not least, we get the required inertia for dead and live and live. So for dead and live is 26.68, and for live is 29.11, which is less than 478. So once you do that, you're all set. So this girder is good to go. It's strong enough. It has adequate strength for the anticipated loads that it's going to see. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. and Have a great day. Bye-bye.